Retro Future. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dank Lexican, and welcome to this new episode on the Steampunk Beginner's Guide. Where we're gonna talk about the concept of lore. But what even is it? Lore is sacred to some, a burden to others. It's a fictional universe, sacred texts, and its satanic verses. When somebody wants to immerse themselves in a long-standing franchise like Star Trek or Lord of the Rings, they might go to a forum and ask where they can find the lore, like it is some sort of travel guide. But lore is more than just background information or a record of events. If that were true, why would people get so upset if the background either gets ignored or retconned? Speaking of ignored, lore is my thing. And you are... Fritz William. Fritz William H. Wendell Smith. I'm on your other channel. Oh, right, yeah. Considering I have been the one doing the retelling of, for example, Lost Exile and Guns of Icarus, I should be the one talking about lore. Well, I suppose I should be recording an SCP video anyway. So, this is different. Anyway, as my generous benefactor just stated... Lore is more than just background information. From a consumer's point of view, lore can be considered a record or a explanation of transpired events inside a fictional universe. But wait, what about the technical details and all the deep explanation of magical systems? Let's talk about that. We can look at lore from two perspectives, that of the creator and that of the consumer. Consumers can be very protective of their established lore. Fans follow a series because they have grown attached to the story, be it by reading the books, watching the series or playing the video games. The transpired events and occurrences create expectations for the future, be it how the story develops characters grow, or just the overall quality of product. If that past record gets changed or ignored, that means that fans are forced to adjust their expectations for the franchise as a whole. For creators, however, this is often just a byproduct. Now, I'm sure some might disagree, but most productive writers don't spend years working out their worlds in every little detail prior to writing their fiction. As worlds are brought to life, creators often make up names, places, descriptions, and whatnot on the spot as they write their scenes. An item description, such as a mysterious character's weapon or other statements about that character, might spark endless discussions among fans. But to a writer, it might have just been another prop to enhance the character's presence in the narrative. From that perspective, we can sympathize with Ryan Johnson for wanting to do something different with the Star Wars universe. However, this is not what the fans wanted. They wanted the existing themes and characters to be expanded upon. And not be turned into, well... This, or get Tasha Yard. Now we could talk about how or why LucasArts, Disney, or Marvel Comics started to mess with their universes they themselves helped create. But that completely negates the reason why fans are offended by this in the first place. For that matter, is this even a new problem? From the moment the first fiction was created, we have been interpreting these texts and derived meaning from what's written between the lines of these stories. Stories is one of the keywords here. Although lore contains facts, we do not develop an emotional attachment to facts alone. Take Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, for example. It's a fact it exists in a galaxy far, far away, but does that statement into itself mean anything? The reason why we attach value to this is because of Luke himself and his trials and tribulations. I could make a whole technical document about the ins and outs about this object, but no matter what details I make up, for most, it is the weapon with which Luke defeated Darth Vader. Case in point, if I show you a random item from a series you've never seen before, it will probably provoke no reaction. But if I display objects from a beloved franchise, 
Millions will get a rise out of it. But why? I mean, both examples are items with relevance to the lore of its known existing fiction. So these should be equal in value, right? Lore is as important as the fans' attachments to the story in question. However, fans can have different interpretations of said lore. So the question is, what are fans more attached to? The lore as presented in fiction, open, ends and all, or their interpretation of events? Compare this to people who take the contents of the Bible as literal, and those who read it as an allegory. Some observers have said that our reverence for works of fiction is very akin to a religious experience, and I agree. It surely would explain why certain people develop a rather unhealthy obsession with their respective fandoms. Those who spend some time on the Ethernet know what fandoms I'm talking about. Regardless, it is this emotional connection that fans have why they can rise up in arms when creators start messing around with the eternal mechanics of a universe. But before getting into that subject of fan rage, how does this emotional connection come into being in the first place? I mean, it's just a story. One can make the silliest concepts into a successful franchise. It's all about presentation. As directors, as Tarantino have proven, you can make a movie about anything and still draw people in. What is in the suitcase of Pulp Fiction? Does anyone care? The characters, strange situations and acting gives us an experience. And it is that experience that really matters and will distract us from any shortcomings the plot has. What makes a good experience is a matter of debate, but in general, good characters and conflicts make engaging stories. When experiencing a good tale, we empathize with the hero, we want them to succeed, and if there is a villain we love to hate, even better. As we follow the heroes on their journeys, we learn about the world, the artifacts, the experiences and adventures that can be had. And if the creators did their jobs right, we want to have these experiences for ourselves. That is why there are role-playing games, video games and simulations of all our favorite franchises. It is not about phasers or lightsabers, it's about the heroes who wield them. Heroes we care about and want to imitate because they reflect who we are and what we want to be. We cannot obtain true happiness in our lifetimes. However, we can live an heroic life. That's why we need examples. People who will show us what must be done. Heroes who show us how we should act instead of just fantasizing about it. It's the reason why Christians attempted to imitate Christ, why kings wanted to be seen as the most successful rulers of old, why nations attempted to be as great if not greater than the civilizations that came before. To imitate heroes is to strive for excellence and be the best we can be. Now there are many ways to be a hero, like being a good parent, helping out your local soup kitchen or making videos on the internet in an attempt to educate the grateful masses. The point is, sometimes we learn skills that are not valued in normal life. So that's why we create universes in which they are. Have burdened ourselves to the point we cannot take any more responsibility, we enjoy escapist fantasies in which we enter less realistic, more heroic roles or blatant power fantasies and indulge ourselves in acts that are not permitted in real life. But in case of role-playing games, we are not imagining fantasies. We are storytellers, trying to entertain our fellow players and engage them in whatever craziness we can come up with. And this is the point where we get to why people can get so upset about change. If hard-fought victories are rendered meaningless, if beloved protagonists no longer represent heroic virtues, are tossed aside for new, less likable characters, if worlds no longer provide the stories and challenges that players are looking for, yes, people get annoyed. Because they're expected to embrace mediocrity. 
which we no longer believe in magic and legendary heroes. We look up to pop culture for our inspiration. These are our myths, our religious figures, not because of some company or even an individual creator says so, but because they inspire us by their actions. Well, this was Fritz William H. Bendel Smith. Please check out our second channel, the Retro Future Research Foundation, where we do audiobooks and other lore-related activities. Also, if you enjoy our work, maybe you'll enjoy our fictional series, The Association of Ishtar, of which we currently have a comic book in the works. Please check that out down in the description. We could use your support. And with that, class dismissed. <laughs>